Hi there. In this session, we are going to start a new chapter, the numerical integration and differentiation using MATLAB. And for this session, we'll learn how to use two functions to perform numerical integration for single variable functions. We'll learn how to use integral and quad gk functions. And they are very similar and the calling style is almost the same. We'll start with the integral function and then we will use the quad gk, the Gauss or North quadrature function, well known method to perform numerical integration. Okay, for now, let's assume that we have a integral of the form, for example, a to b of a function of, for example, x and the differential of x. The general form of calling integral and quad gk functions is in this form. Getting the value of this integral is possible through calling this function integral of f from a to b. So we provide the function as our first parameter or integrand and we provide the range of integration as our second and third parameters. For example, let's start with integrating this value, this function, for example, x from 1 to 2. And you know that the value of this integral can be computed as this from 1 to 2, and that's computing this value. And that's 1.5. And let's check that if MATLAB can compute this integral or not, and how we can compute this integral. You can define the function x as, for example, f is a function of x, and this function returns the value of x. It's a identity function. And let's call the integral function, and you provide f as the first parameter, 1 and 2, and that's it, 1.5. And if you provide other ranges, for example, 1, 2, 3, you'll get 4. And you can check for the values. Okay, let's start for a more complicated example. For example, let's calculate the value of in this integral, integral of this function e to the power of minus x2 times yx, and that's from 0 to 1, for example. Let's calculate this value, and you can define f as a function of x, which is x times dxp of minus x to the power of 2. We use this element-wise product and element-wise power operators to make possible vectorization in calculations performed by integral functions. It's safe to use these operators instead of the non-vectorized versions. And you can calculate, for example, values of various points at once if you use these dot or element-wise operators. Okay, let's integrate the function from 0 to 1, and that's it. And if you increase this value, and finally, if you let it to go to the infinity, then this is the value of integral, and it's equal to half. And, you know, this value equals to from this 0 0.3161, 0 0.3161. Three one six one, and this integral, this infinite integral of the same function, equals to half. And for example, if you like, you can compute integrals with singularities at their lower bounds. For example, let's calculate the value of this integral, integral of this function, ln of x, natural logarithm of x. And you know, we have a singularity at our lower bound, and we know that the logarithm of zero is not defined, or we can say it's minus infinity. And 
We know that the value of this integral can be computed as this, and the integral of ln x is x ln of x minus x, and you evaluate this from 0 to 1 and compute the difference, and you know for the lower bound it's 0, for the upper bound the ln is 0, and the minus 1 remains here, so the value of this integral is minus 1. Let's calculate the value of this integral using MATLAB. You can compute the integral of log function. Remember that the log in MATLAB context and most of programming languages denotes the natural logarithm. And for the log of, in the base of 10, we use log 10. So, at sign log is a function handle to the log function and that's equivalent to say that x log x and it's a shortcut to do this and from 0 to 1 that's minus 1 however that's not the exact solution and if you click this you see that this has some errors and if you for example format long and call the same function you see the complete result here and for these cases of error and uncertainty you can use some switches some parameters of error to make the results more precise you can specify for example integral at sign log 0 1 and that's it and adding some named parameters for example, for relative tolerance error, we use zero to make the relative error ineffective in the computation. And we use the absolute tolerance value. For example, the default value is 10 to the power of minus 10. And here we use, for example, 12. If you set it to 1 times 10 to the power of minus 10, you'll get this and if you increase this you'll get this and if you increase this much more you will get a more precise solution and what are these relative tolerance and absolute tolerance let's talk about the relation of these to the result of integral function and there is a fundamental equation relating these values to the output and the error of output and we'll talk about this Assume that we have an integral that's value, exact value is q, the uppercase q, which is the exact and unknown value of a computation. And in this case, the computation of numerical integral. And the result, the lowercase q, is the result of our computation, the actual result, the provided result. And the absolute value of error between these two values, that's q minus q, will always be smaller than the maximum value of one of these, the max value of one of these, absolute tolerance. And let's move this, all these lines. The maximum value among absolute tolerance and relative tolerance times y absolute value of q or you can use this that's this error always remains less than the maximum value among these two values and so if you for example set the relative tolerance to zero then absolute tolerance will define the maximum amount or you may set the absolute tolerance to zero then relative tolerance is a game maker and finalizer of the value of the upper bound of this error and the integral function and other numerical functions in matlab always attempt to satisfy this constraint so in our style of calling here we set the relative tolerance to zero and absolute tolerance to this value so relative tolerance goes away by setting this as zero and that's ineffective however this makes the algorithm to find a value for the small or lowercase q for the integral that 
have an error of this order and you see if you for example decrease this value you'll set some values you see that the result is not precise as this one so you can set the relative tolerance and absolute tolerance according to your conditions Beside the calculation of real valued integrals, integral and quad GK are capable of finding the values of integrals in complex plane. So, for example, assume that we are going to calculate the value of some integral in this form, for example, 1 over z dz. And we know that if c does not contain any poles of the function, or the function does not have any poles at all, then the value of function according to the Cauchy's theorem will be zero. And if this path contains some poles, then have some non-zero values for a closed path. To calculate this integral, we can use two approaches. One of them is using the value of this path as a parametric function. And for example, we have the path from T1 to T2, and the path is defined by, for example, gamma. And these are the same. And then, generally, let's write it F as Fc. We have F of gamma of T times by gamma prime T, which is the derivative of this function according to dt and times by dt and that's straightforward we converted the contour integral in complex plane to a real integral and MATLAB and the integral function is capable of finding the solution for this for example let's calculate the value of this integral integral of 1 over z dz when c is the unit circle so you can say that c is equal to gamma of t that is for example you can say that's the cosine t plus i sine of t where t is from 0 to 2 pi 2 times pi and you can calculate this as a function of t from 0 to 2 pi and 1 over gamma t and gamma prime t and dt. And let's calculate this value. We say g or gamma and that's a function of t that's equal to cosine t plus i times sine t. And you can calculate the g prime manually, a function of t and value of the derivative of cosine is minus sine t plus 1i cosine t and now define the f as 1 over z and we're ready to calculate the value of this integral f of g of t times g prime of t from 0 to 2 pi like this and let's define the function here function of t which is f of g of t times g prime of t from 0 to 2 pi i think we must use the dot element here and you see that we cannot use this operator we must use the vectorized operators like this and if you read the hint displayed here it says that to perform element wise multiplication use this operator and we changed it and the result is almost 2 pi i we know that the value of this integral equals to this value 2 pi i and if you check for this you get this result and the result is almost equal to 2 pi i and that's it we can convert the complex function to a real function and calculate the value however there is a simple version of this action and we can perform this action in a much easier way using a waypoints switch of the integral function
This time, we must specify a path here. And for example, let's calculate the value of the function in this path and starting from 1 and returning back to 1. But in this path, for example, that's the first point. We go here, that's i. And then we go here, that's minus 1. And we go here, that's minus i. And we go here. And this is our closed path. We define it with c. And for these kind of integration, this is our starting and ending point, And we provide it as our boundary points. And we define these points in the order they appear in path as waypoints. So the, these are way points i minus 1 and minus i. So we have f as this, and let's calculate the value of integral here of f from 1 to 1, and that's a closed path. And we specify the way points here and i minus 1 and minus i here. And that's like it, we have 2pi here. And let's check for a path that does not contain any poles of this function. The, the single pole of this function is the origin. And if we close the path in a way that it does not contain any poles, we'll get 0 as the result. So let's check for this f1 to 1, for example, and away points. And for example, 2 plus i and 2 minus i. That's a triangle path starting from 1, going to 2 plus i, and going down to 2 minus i, and returning back to 1. If you want to visualize it, that's here. It goes up here, then goes down here, and returns back here. It's a triangular path and does not enclose any poles of the integrand. And then we have a result almost equal to zero. That's of the order of 10 to the power of minus 16. And that's almost equal to zero. And if you want, you can calculate the absolute value of this. And that's almost zero. So we've seen that we can calculate the contour complex integrals using the waypoints switch. Another function is the quad gk, the Gauss Cronord quadrature, and the style of calling this function is almost same as the integral, and that has the first three parameters as function a and b, that's the same, and the named parameters and parameter value pairs are absolute tolerance, relative tolerance, and waypoints, they are the same, and there is a max interval count which is the maximum number of intervals allowed for the quadrature computation. And if you want, you can use this. And that's almost the same. For example, for this case, you can call the quad GK. And you have the same result. Let's go back and recall this and replace the quad GK, replace the integral with quad GK. And that's the same. You can use integral and quad gk wherever you are looking for computing a integral numerically. So we are at the end of the session and in next sessions we'll work with double or triple integrals and deal with integrals and differentiation in the discrete domain as well.